Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, in the previous class, we started discussing about the heat transfer with phase change. In uh, heat transfer with phase change, we come across the boiling and condensation. Boiling, you know, whenever the liquid comes in contact with a surface which is maintained at a saturation temperature of the liquid, then the boiling occurs. And this uh, condensation is a reverse process of uh, boiling. When the saturation, uh, uh, the fluid at a saturation temperature comes in contact with a surface which is maintained less than that of the, the temperature of a saturation temperature. That is the saturation, at temperature is one for condensation at which the condensation occurs, the condensation. Uh, uh, when the surface is maintained less than that of the saturation temperature of the fluid, the condensation occurs. Uh, here boiling you come across uh, pool boiling pool boiling is one in which the when the uh, uh, liquid is heated uh, by the submerged surface okay and the such type of boiling is called the uh, pool boiling and flow boiling is one in which the fluid is uh, uh, boiling occurs when the fluid is flowing through a, a certain device that is called the tube this you come across the almost all boilers uh, next uh, we studied about the uh, Mm. the uh, different regimes of uh, uh, boiling uh, curve you come across the natural convection boiling and uh, their uh, bubbles uh, uh, formation bubble raised to the surface then the nucleate boiling so you know, formation of the nucleation sites that is the growth of the bubble then a uh, film boiling okay stable film boiling as well as unstable film boiling the maximum heat flux as well as the minimum heat flux uh, laden force point as well as the the A, B, C, D points we have seen on the, uh, and uh, uh, when you are designing uh, this, uh, any thermal power station, on the boilers, so that we need to design our equipment with uh, below the critical heat flux because the burnout may occur. But the same is not true with the cryogenic equipments where we can up to even design our uh, equipments the, in the cryogenic applications beyond critical flux because there will be no problem of burnouts. And at the same time, uh, we come across the uh, heat transfer coefficients. We we'll discussed about the heat transfer coefficient. The heat transfer coefficients, as we discussed uh, in case of the convection heat transfer process, the natural convection or a force convection, where the, the heat transfer coefficients uh, associated with these processes are uh, of the order of 100 at the maximum with the force convection. Natural convection, it is still less between 5 or uh, 28 or maximum, it is up to 38 depending upon the temperature difference. But the convection heat transfer coefficients associated with associated with the boiling as well as condensation or of the order of uh, uh, thousands together it may cross even 1 lakh or 1 lakh 20,000 50,000 depending upon what temperature and what pressure we are maintaining and uh, while discussing about the, uh, the pool boiling regimes uh, uh, that you come across the formation of the bubbles how the bubble forms and uh, how the bubble growth in size and how the, uh, they detached or detached from the surface or collapse into the surrounding fluid. So this, uh, uh, now let us discuss, uh, uh, start with the class with the bubble growth mechanism. You know, in uh, nucleate uh, boiling, bubbles are created by the expansion of entrapped gas or vapor at small cavities in the surface. Previous class, I had given an example of a heating of a water in a container on the LPG using LPG uh, stove. There, you know, uh, at the beginning of the uh, heating process, bottom surface, you can see the small bubble formation. After some time, with the increase of the heat transfer, the bubble vanishes. Or you, you cannot see the those bubbles uh, after certain uh, minutes of heating. But initially, at the beginning, you see the bubbles at the bottom of the container whenever you heat a glass of water in a container using LPG gas you can see the formation of the bubbles that is because of the the entrapped gas or vapor at the small cavities in the surface the same thing occurs even in thermal power stations due to surface roughness you come across small cavities will be there during the fabrication of the either tubes suppose you put the tube uh, water tube boiler surface a cavity, small, small cavities will be there. Whatever the gas entrapped in that gas or a vapor that re results in the formation of the bubbles. And these bubbles grow in size and uh, the growth of the bubble depends upon 
surface tension at the liquid vapor in interface the bubble growth uh, the may one reason for the growth of the bubble is surface tension this surface tension you have studied in your fluid mechanics surface tension for a uh, so bubble uh, the uh, water droplet uh, liquid jet uh, depending under different headings you have studied surface tension just recall so that will be helpful to understand this in a better manner at the same time the temperature as well as the pressure and uh, depending upon the excess temperatures excess temperature you know it is a difference between the the saturation temperature as well as the surface temperature if it is a condensation in case of a uh, boiling it is the uh, the surface temperature minus saturation temperature because surface temperature is maintained higher than that of the saturation temperature hence the boiling occurs depending upon this excess temperatures bubbles may collapse on the surface they may collapse on the surface or they may expand detach from the surface dissipated in the body of the liquid or rise to the surface of the body depending upon the excess temperature you can observe during the uh, boiling heat transfer the bubble may collapse on the surface they may expand in size detach from the surface or they may disappear during the process that is dissipated in the body of the liquid once they enter into the body of the liquid you cannot no longer you can see the the bubbles next they may rise to the surface sometimes they may come to the surface i just now i have given an example of heating up a water heating up a water and uh, in a container using lpg gas so you can see the sometimes the bubble also coming uh, reach, even leaving the surface of the the water level okay that you can see they may rise to the surface but they may again collapse back collapse back we do to the transfer of heat to the surrounding air so latent heat is reduced uh, latent heat of vaporization reduced so they uh, falls back to the surface this you can observe whenever you heat a, uh, a glass of water in a container using lpg so you can clearly observe in saturated or bulk boiling the bubbles may break away from the surface due to buoyancy effects so you see saturated or the bulk boiling we have defined this saturated or bulk boiling that means this uh, uh, temperature of the surrounding liquid is less than that of the saturation temperature suppose if the uh, temperature of main body of the liquid is uh, in saturated or bulk boiling uh, it is oh, sorry it is not uh, saturated bulk boiling the temperature of the liquid uh, is uh, above the saturation temperatures in that case the bubbles may break away from the surface due to buoyancy effect saturated or bulk boiling as the name in, in, uh, indicates in this uh, saturated or bulk boiling the temperature of the liquid is above the saturation temperature uh, then in that case the bubbles may break away from the surface due to buoyancy effects and move into the body of the liquid okay the movement of the these uh, bubbles into the body of the liquid is whenever you go for saturated or the bulk boiling the bubbles may break away from the surface due to buoyancy effects you know the buoyancy means the movement natural convection we have seen that the movement occurs as a result of the density difference caused by the buoyancy effects in the similar manner the bubbles move into the body of the liquid so in this case suppose if it is a the movement of the these bubbles occurs within the body of the liquid heat transfer rate is influenced by agitation caused by the bubbles so there may be agitation due to the movement of the the bubbles into the main body of the liquid and vapor transport of energy into the body of the liquid so these uh, the vapors will carry the bubbles will carry the energy into the body of the liquid and because of this reason these two reasons the heat transfer rate is the influenced or it is rather i can say it is more than that of the other modes of boiling now this is the uh, let us consider uh, to understand in a better manner the bubble growth mechanism consider the force balance on a vapor bubble force balance on a vapor bubble so here uh, this pv and pl pv is the vapor pressure pl is the liquid pressure you can see they are opposite uh, acting in the this is the surface tension okay there are two forces are acting let r be the radius of the the bubble there are two forces are acting one is the pressure force another one is the surface tension force okay surface tension force is given by this 2 pi r this you are familiar with what you have studied in your fluid mechanics this equation 2 pi r sigma where sigma is the surface tension force 
it is denoted by the sigma and measured in newton per meter the pressure force is pi r square the cross sectional area on which it is acting you know and pv minus pl okay no bubbles are not in thermal equilibrium uh, please remember the bubbles are not in thermal thermodynamic equilibrium with the surrounding liquid okay bubbles are not in thermodynamic equilibrium with the surrounding liquid vapor inside the bubble is not necessarily at the same temperature as the liquid so bubble means it is a vapor inside is there okay the, that is a film is formed inside there may be vapor vapor inside of the bubble is not necessarily at the same temperature as that of the liquid keep it in your mind the bubbles may not be in thermal dynamic equilibrium with the surrounding liquid liquid is there because the boiling is occurring continuously it is at the saturation temperature but this bubble may not be in thermal equilibrium thermodynamic or thermal equilibrium what we can say with the surrounding liquid and at the same time the vapor inside of the bubble is not necessarily at the same temperature as that of the that means these two are different and equilibrium of the bubble is possible okay it is it, it is also possible to have the equilibrium thermodynamic equilibrium if the pressure forces of the liquid and vapor must be balanced by the surface tension force at the vapor liquid interface but equilibrium of the bubble bubble is possible not the thermodynamic equilibrium just now i told it is a, sorry for that it is a equilibrium that means it may remain in a bubble form equilibrium of the bubble is possible this is similar to that uh, your rain drop what you are observing you can see the rain drop when it is freely suspended in the air that pressure force uh, from the air side as well as the the force acting on the uh, uh, surface tension force and the pressure force as long as these two equal you will see the rain bubble as soon as it touch the ground what happens these two are in that uh, imbalance so bursting of the bubble will take place here also the equilibrium of the bubble is possible if the pressure forces of the liquid and vapor must be balanced by the surface tension force at the vapor liquid interface so the bubble inside there is a vapor okay and like surrounding liquid is there so the equilibrium of the bubble is possible if the pressure forces of the liquid and vapor must be balanced by the surface tension force at the vapor liquid interface no that uh, already uh, you know this uh, this is the surface tension force this is the pressure force this pi r square is equal to pv minus pl so pv is the vapor pressure inside the bubble pl is the liquid pressure and sigma is the surface tension at vapor liquid interface so this is equal to 2 pi r sigma so if you arrange the difference between the pressure of the vapor as well as the liquid it is given by 2 sigma by r where r is the radius of the bubble now let us consider the case of bubble in pressure equilibrium that is not growing or collapsing okay pressure it is in pressure equilibrium the bubble is either not growing or the collapsing then the pressure equilibrium okay you can understand the pressure maintained constant okay in that case the it is not growing or it is not collapsing but at the same time the temperature of the vapor bubble is the saturation temperature corresponding to that pressure pv if it is a if you consider the bubble with pressure equilibrium which is either not growing or collapsing in that case the temperature of the vapor bubble is equal to the saturation temperature corresponding to the pressure pv suppose if the liquid is at saturation temperature corresponding to the pressure pl suppose if the liquid is at saturation temperature corresponding to the pressure pl it is below the temperature inside the bubble that means the corresponding liquid temperature is less than that of the temperature inside the bubble you know from the heat transfer heat always flows from point of higher temperature to the point of lower temperature if you consider the liquid at saturation temperature okay corresponding to pressure pl in that case what, what happens the heat from the bubble must be conducted out of the bubble heat must be conducted out of the if that is the situation then what happens vapor when heat comes out of the bubble means what vapor inside must condense causing the bubble to collapse once the the temperature difference due to temperature difference the 
bubble temperature is higher than that of the inside vapor temperature is higher than that of the surrounding liquid then heat transfer occurs from bubble to the surrounding liquid in that case what happens due to reduction in the temperature vapor inside must condense causing the bubble to collapse this is the phenomenon that occurs when the bubble collapses on the heating surface or in the body of the liquid this is one of the reason for the collapse of the bubble on the heating surface or in the body of the liquid due to transfer of heat from the bubble to the surrounding liquid so in order to grow and escape from the surface suppose if at all the bubble have to grow in size and escape from the surface they must receive heat from the surface this occurs when the liquid is in superheated condition that means when the liquid is in superheated condition the heat is given to the bubble in that case the what happens then they grow in size and they try to escape from the surface this is possible only when the liquid is in superheated condition hence the temperature of the liquid must be greater than the vapor temperature inside the bubble for this to occur if, if at all they have to escape from the surface they must receive the heat from the surface for that to occur temperature of the liquid must be greater than the vapor temperature inside the bubble vapor temperature inside the bubble and this we can call it as a metastable thermodynamic state and this occurs we can call this as a metastable stable we can understand but it is a still metastable thermodynamic state experimentally observed because always there will be uh, heat transfer taking place so we, we cannot call it as a thermodynamic state but it is a stable thermodynamic state but it is a still a metastable because there may be some bubble collapse okay heat transfer occurs from bubble to the surrounding fluid then if the increase in the excess temperature what happens then heat from surface to the bubble is transferred so they grow in size so hence we can call it as a it is not a stable thermodynamic state but it is a hence it is called metastable thermodynamic state experimentally uh, observed hence it is experimentally observed and accounts for the growth of the bubbles after leaving the surface in some regions of nucleate boiling so it is uh, observed experimentally and accounts for the growth of the bubbles after leaving the surface in some regions of the nucleate boiling once they leave the surface they start growing in the size still there is a considerable controversy as how exactly bubbles are initially formed on the heat transfer surface and remains as a subject of research interest still there is a controversy controversy how they bubble initially form it is it is believed that it is due to the cavities okay that is uh, co entrapped gas that will result in the formation of the bubbles due to the uh, uh, improper surface surface roughness some cavities we can say the bubbles are formed initially but still it is a controversy as how there is a considerable controversy as how exactly bubbles are initially formed on the heat transfer surface and remains as a subject of research interest even still this is has is the subject of research interest now let us go for the boiling correlations after knowing the uh, pool boiling uh, regimes different regimes of pool boiling okay uh, different regimes of pool boiling you come across the natural convection boiling film boiling you come across bubble nucleate boiling okay nucleate boiling occurs when uh, till uh, delta t excess temperature up to 30 degree celsius up to 30 degree or less than nucleate boiling occurs but there is a natural convection zone is there okay nucleation uh, uh, nucleate boiling is there uh, next film boiling is there so whatever the knowledge you have gained from uh, uh, convection chapter okay now those are helpful to uh, study the boiling correlations okay now let us uh, start with the uh, uh, study the uh, different boiling correlations and these correlations whatever uh, now we are discussing these are all available in your uh, heat and mass transfer data and book the Uh, you you can use the depending upon the what type of regime it is whether it is a natural convection boiling regime or uh, nucleate boiling regime or uh, stable film boiling regime or uh, unstable uh, film boiling regime so the number of correlations researchers have worked and they have given the different correlations 
okay uh, you have to use these correlations depending upon our requirement whether uh, we are in which boiling region whether it is a natural convection boiling region the film nucleate boiling film boiling I mean that again film boiling uh, stable and unstable so depending upon our requirement we have to use the appropriate boiling correlations these boiling correlations are available in any of the heat transfer textbook as well as your heat and mass transfer data handbook and you are all already aware you have learned about the different uh, boiling regimes that you have learned that the boiling regimes differ considerably in their characters in their character because you come across natural convection boiling uh, nucleate boiling film boiling and in that again stable and unstable film boiling obviously they differ in their character different heat transfer relations need to be used for different boiling regimes so we cannot club uh, remember no single equation single correlation is available to calculate the boiling heat flux all together all boiling regime together single equation is not available you have to study separately the natural convection boiling regime nucleate boiling regime film boiling regime in that again stable and stable so different depending upon the type of boiling regime the different correlations heat transfer relations are correlated and you have to use depending upon the requirement and you are all aware from aware from natural convection boiling uh, natural convection heat transfer here natural convection boiling regime is governed by natural convection currents you know natural convection occurs due to density difference caused by the buoyancy effects whenever you heat uh, the liquid so the natural convection currents are developed due to the uh, density difference caused by the buoyancy effects heat transfer rates in this regime okay suppose you want to calculate the what is the heat transfer rate in natural convection boiling regime is we have to use the natural convection relations already studied okay we have studied natural convection uh, heat transfer aspects in under the heading of natural convection those correlations we have to use now boiling correlations for nucleate uh, boiling regime rate of heat transfer in the nucleate boiling region strongly depend upon the number of active nucleation sites on the surface just now we have studied the bubble bubble growth mechanism uh, burst, how the bursting of the bubble takes place or how the growth of a bubble, bubble takes how they detach because when the temperature uh, the uh, saturation temperature of the liquid is very very high okay superheated temperature what i can say higher than that of the saturation temperature then they may leave the surface they receive the heat they grow in size the rate of bubble formation at each site that is the nature of nucleation it is very difficult to predict just now i have mentioned that it is a still a topic of research interest rate of bubble formation at each site how they form how they burst okay so how they again leave the surface grow in size it is very difficult to predict and still it is a topic of research interest okay type and condition of the heated surface also affect the heat transfer here in this case nucleate boiling region what type of heat surface were used for the heating uh, whether it is having the the, uh, the surface roughness of that uh, what type of material we have used material properties as well as the roughness of that surface which is used to transfer heat is also affect the heat transfer rate in nucleate boiling these complications hence these complications made it difficult to develop theoretical relations for heat transfer okay so because of these complications because the nucleate boiling regime heat transfer strongly depends on the number of active nucleation sites on the surface rate of bubble formation at each site nature of which is very difficult to predict and type of condition of the heated surface so because of these complications it is very difficult to develop theoretical relations for heat transfer the rate of heat transfer in the nucleate the boiling regime first proposed by roshan now in 1952 okay he has given the the proposed this equation for the nucleate boiling heat flux and this equation is available in your heat and mass transfer data handbook you can use comfortably this equation uh, i have mentioned only the various parameter among the various parameters only two i have mentioned because other correlations you can easily understand just looking at for example q nucleate nucleate boiling heat flux mu well 
kinematic sorry dynamic viscosity of the liquid hfg latent heat of evaporation g acceleration due to gravity rho l density of the liquid rho v is the density of the vapor this is surface tension sigma cpl specific heat of the liquid ts surface temperature t saturation uh, it is a saturation temperature hfg uh, you know latent heat of evaporation pr is the prontal number here n and csf so csf experimental constant that depends on surface liquid combination what type of uh, surface and liquid suppose if you use copper and water that value this table is available in the heat and mass transfer data and book or in any other any of the heat transfer textbook these values are available for different combinations the surface which is used for heating as well as what type of liquid so water copper combination it is available or any other in cryogenic applications you will get the so combination liquid keeps on changes surface keeps on changes what type of material we are using for that particular application so depending upon that you have to choose this csf experimental constant so this is given based on his experimental observation okay n is the experimental constant that depends on the fluid what fluid you are using for water it is different for uh, uh, refrigerant for example uh, uh, freon 12 freon 22 or 134 a different uh, uh, refrigerant we are using then cryogenic fluid like oxygen nitrogen so depending upon the fluid this constant n depends other things again you need to evaluate all these properties from your heat and mass transfer data handbook hence design engineer must have the knowledge of maximum heat flux in uh, in order to avoid the danger of burnout now let us start with the boiling correlations for peak heat flux or the the maximum heat flux that is the critical heat flux okay critical heat flux so design engineer must have the knowledge of the boiling rhythms okay boiling rhythms unless otherwise for different combination of fluid and surface if you doesn't know the how this boiling curve comes and how the uh, the heat transfer occurs without the knowledge of this we cannot design a better performing the, uh, heat transfer device with respect to boiling hence it is necessary for the design engineer to have the knowledge of maximum heat flux in order to avoid the danger of burnout if you doesn't have the knowledge of this there may be possibility of danger of burnout critical heat flux in the nucleate pool boiling was determined theoretically by ss kutate lerje of russia in 1948 and n zuber of us 1958 they have both together they have given this the theoretical correlation for critical heat flux q max that is ccr hfg into bracket sigma g rho v square into rho l minus rho v to the power 1 by 4 so other uh, parameters involved you can easily understand just now i have mentioned hfg latent heat of evaporation surface tension sigma g acceleration due to gravity density of the vapor density of the liquid ccr c is a constant whose value depends on the geometry of the heater okay so this uh, constant uh, uh, what you are observing in the equation ccr this uh, its value depends on the geometry of the heater geometry of the heater geometry of the heater now let us uh, discuss about the uh, minimum heat flux boiling correlations minimum heat flux boiling correlation these all equations are available in your heat and mass transfer data and we as well as any of the heat transfer text textbooks okay and minimum heat flux is of uh, very is having practical interest because it represents the lower limit for the heat flux in the film boiling region okay this is uh, minimum heat flux is uh, of practical interest because it represents the lower limit for the heat flux in the film boiling region uh, zuber using the stability theory derived the following expression for the minimum heat flux for a large horizontal plate zuber has given the minimum heat flux equation for a large horizontal plate large horizontal plate this q minimum is given by 0.09 rho v hfg density of the vapor latent heat of vaporization into sigma g into rho l minus rho v divided by rho l plus rho v whole square to the power 1 by 4 where g is acceleration due to gravity rho l minus rho v 
you know this is a rho l is the density of the liquid and rho v is the density of the vapor now let us discuss about the the film boiling correlations okay bromle developed a theory for the prediction of heat flux for stable film boiling on the outside of horizontal cylinder or sphere of diameter d the bromle has developed the film boiling correlation for the stable film boiling on the outside of a horizontal cylinder or sphere of diameter d this is given by this equation q film is equal to c film is a constant the value of this c film is 0.62 for horizontal cylinders and 0.67 for spheres depending upon whether it is a horizontal cylinder or a sphere the c film and these values are available in the any of the heat transfer textbook as well as the heat and mass transfer data handbook c film into bracket g kv to the power cube that is k is the thermal conductivity of paper rho v is the density of paper rho l minus rho v into bracket hfg plus 0.4 see remember this 0.4 is a constant uh, this is something different in your data handbook you come out with that is because of the progress in the research work okay uh, some textbooks uh, if you refer uh, uh, old edition textbooks it is 0.4 new edition textbooks due to the progress in the research work this this will change don't bother about that and whatever given in the data heat and mass transfer data handbook that you can use this cpv specific heat of the vapor into cs minus ts minus t saturation that is saturation temperature my uh, surface temperature minus saturation temperature divided by mu v that is the dynamic viscosity of the vapor d is the diameter whether it is a cylinder or sphere accordingly you have to use the diameter of that into bracket ts minus t saturation ts is the surface temperature t sat is the saturation temperature whole to the power 1 by 4 into bracket ts minus t saturation h into delta t this is this, is, this equation Uh, available as uh, heat transfer coefficient in your data heat and mass transfer data handbook multiplied by the temperature difference delta t it will give the heat flux further if you multiply it by the surface area it will give the heat transfer rate in boiling film boiling regime at high temperatures for example suppose if it is above 300 degree celsius heat transfer across the vapor film is by radiation suppose if the you know the temperature keeps on increases radiation effects comes into picture that you have observed in the cool boiling regimes cool boiling curve you have seen that radiation also comes into picture depending upon the the higher temperatures the radiation heat transfer can be determined by using the equation q radiation radiation heat transfer uh, radiation heat transfer can be determined by using the equation q radiation epsilon sigma ts to the power 4 minus t saturation to the power 4 this radiation equation you are already familiar this uh, sigma epsilon is the not sigma epsilon is the emissivity of the heating surface because surface is having there it is not black body is a perfect uh, absorber as well as the emitter but non black surfaces they are not emit energy as that of the black body so we need to consider the emissivity of the heating surface so what type of heating surface you are using accordingly we have to use, use this emissivity of the surface to calculate the uh, radiation heat flux and uh, sigma is the stefan boltzmann constant sigma symbol is missing here okay sorry for that Sig sigma is the stefan boltzmann constant which is equal to 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt per meter square kelvin sigma symbol is missing here sorry for that uh, stefan boltzmann constant which is equal to 5.67 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt per meter square kelvin so this uh, is uh, you have come across uh, while learning the you have already studied about Uh, this while learning the radiation heat transfer and this is also available in your data handbook convection and radiation heat transfer mechanisms adversely affect each other in film boiling so you know convection as well as the radiation heat transfer mechanisms both adversely affect each other in film boiling radiation heat transfer from the surface to the liquid enhances the rate of evaporation and hence the thickness of vapor film which impedes the convection heat transfer okay you know radiation heat transfer from the surface to the liquid enhances the rate of evaporation and hence the thickness of the vapor film which impedes the convection heat transfer you know vapor film is a 
very bad conductor of heat that affects the convection heat transfer okay for liquid proper uh, heat transfer not occurs one of the vapor thick vapor film is formed it will affect the heat transfer from the surface to the surrounding liquid so your convection heat transfer is affected okay once because the vapor film is a very bad conductor of heat bromley had determined the relation for q radiation okay if it is q radiation less than q film which correlates the experimental data well okay q radiation is less than q film and this uh, correlates the uh, the experimental data uh, well uh, that is given by q total is equal to q film plus 3 by 4 into q radiation that is the 7.75 into q radiation bromley has determined this relation when q radiation is less than q film uh, that correlates the experimental data well he has given this equation this equation also you can find in your heat and mass transfer data handbook as well as any other any of the uh, heat transfer data handbook which is available here as well as in your data handbook also okay let me stop uh, this completes uh, the uh, boiling heat transfer the Uh, boiling regimes as well as the boiling correlations you have come across what is boiling different types of boiling boiling regimes you have studied and the bubble growth mechanism you have studied and different correlation depending upon the type of uh, regime natural convection regime uh, nucleate boiling and film boiling so uh, let me stop at this stage and the next class will start with the condensation heat transfer condensation heat transfer have a good day